Welcome into the Kansas City Chiefs report by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here in for Harrison Graham today as he's got a few days off. So yours truly holding things down with the latest news and rumors on your favorite team. We'll catch up to speed on Chris Jones in his holdout. Also talk about the possible trade for Josh Jacobs. Yes, you heard that right. We'll dive into all of that and more coming up in just a matter of moments. Before we do that, though, Highly encourage you to share today's video. We want to get this out to as many members of the kingdom as possible, but we need your help. So here's what I need you to do. Go ahead and click the share button, select the Twitter icon, and click post to Twitter. If you tag me at Tyler Jones Live, then I'll retweet you. In the first 10 people to share today's show and to follow me on Twitter, I will follow you back. So if you pat my back, I'll pat your back, and then everyone's happy. So highly encourage you to go ahead and share today's show. We certainly would appreciate it. We'll get started with today's show. Chris Jones holding out as he did not report to the first day of mandatory minicamp for your Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, this news coming from ESPN's Adam Schefter uh, this afternoon stating, Chiefs four-time Pro Bowl defensive tackle Chris Jones, whom Kansas City is open to signing a contract extension this summer, is not at the team's mandatory minicamp today. And a big note there from Shefty, making it very clear that the Chiefs are open to getting a deal done, but he's not around uh, at this point in time. So with that, we want to show you more on uh, Chris Jones here. Uh, entering the last year of his current deal, has a cap hit of $28.2 million this year in uh, 2023 for the four-time Pro Bowler and the uh, two-time Super Bowl champion. And we have a photo that uh, I want to bring you from uh, Minicamp Today. Uh, this was uh, tweeted out by uh, Adam Teicher of uh, ESPN, who uh, covers the Chiefs. And you can see there's the uh, setting there, a beautiful day there in Kansas City, but no sign of of Chris Jones uh, at this point. Now, I'll say this. I know that there are going to be a lot of Chiefs fans that are going to be very concerned and wonder what the future holds with Chris Jones not around and if the Chiefs are going to move on from him or not or if a deal is going to get done. I'll say this. I believe, as I sit here today on this Tuesday afternoon, that Brett Veach is going to figure out what's best for the Chiefs one way or the other. The guy is a magician. He hardly makes any mistakes. I trust his judgment on what he does here. He's going to do what's best for this franchise. And I'm not just trying to preach propaganda from the Chiefs front office here. I think that we've seen enough from Brett Veach in those two Super Bowl titles and the personnel decisions he's made to do what's best for this organization. And uh, obviously, you would love to see Chris Jones stay, and hopefully that they can work something out. But if we see a situation where Chris Jones is wanting more than what he's worth and what makes financial sense for the Chiefs, I believe Brett Veach is going to do what's best for this organization one way or the other. So what do you think? Will Chris Jones play for the Chiefs this season? Will we see him suit up in this holdout, come back to Kansas City and get a new contract? Or is he going to be traded and be done? Let us know what you think in the comment section or pinned comment today. You might get an ad break. If so, take advantage of it. Type Y for yes. Type in for no. Will the Chiefs uh, have Chris Jones this season or not? Let me know what you think. Josh Jacobs, the Las Vegas Raiders star wide receiver, has been named as a top trade candidate for the Kansas City Chiefs. That's according to last word on sports. I know what you're thinking right away. Wait. He plays for the Raiders, rival, division. What, where does that make any sense? Well, stay with me, folks. Let's read into what uh, Last Word on Sports had to say about this possibility. This one is the longest of long shots, but the Kansas City Chiefs deserve a mention just due to how perfect the fit is. The Chiefs have the best offense in football, but their starting running back is a seventh-round pick that doesn't catch passes. Jacobs has the three-down skill set that Andy Reid craves, and the running back would make this offense all that harder to defend. It's hard to imagine a world where the Raiders trade Josh Jacobs to a division rival, but anything could happen in the wild NFL. 
The Raiders are going to be bad in 2023, so if the Chiefs are making the highest offer, then perhaps they embrace the tank and watch the rich get richer. Now, while I sit here and while you sit here and think the Raiders are going to be bad, I don't think the Raiders think they're going to be bad. I think the Raiders are in a mode where they're trying to save face as much as they can because their head coach and GM are fighting for their jobs at this point. So I don't expect them to be trading off Josh Jacobs unless they absolutely have to. As far as the Chiefs' end of things goes, uh, respect to Josh Jacobs. Uh, He's a very fine running back. I love any time we get a chance to talk about a kid from Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, like Josh Jacobs, uh, you know, not too far down the road, obviously. Uh, Great story to see how far he's come and the career he's had. But a trade for Kansas City here just doesn't make sense for a running back, as far as I'm concerned. The blueprint, and we'll show you this here in just a second, for what the Chiefs have done when it comes to winning these Super Bowls has involved not having to pay the running back position a ton of money. I just don't think it makes sense for what the Chiefs are trying to do, not to mention just how uh, impossible it would be uh, to trade within the division, which is so highly unlikely. I don't see it happening. We'll show you more on Josh Jacobs and show you some numbers on how the Chiefs operate and do things when it comes to the running back position in just a second. But first, should the Chiefs trade for Josh Jacobs? What do you think? Your chance to weigh in. Type T for trade. Type P for pass. Tell me what you think in the comment section. T for trade. P for pass. Now, look, folks. Even when our guy Harrison Graham is out, joins him a little vacay, that doesn't stop us from bringing you a Kansas City Chiefs report video here on the channel. As uh, I got the call up, had to uh, fill in today, but I love any chance I get to chime in and hang out with the uh, the kingdom here. We're bringing you news and rumors segments. We got our live shows here on the channel. Anytime the Chiefs make a move, you know that we're going to bring you a video as quickly as we can as well. Subscribe for free today. Turn on notifications so you never miss a moment. YouTube.com slash Chiefs TV to subscribe today. More on Josh Jacobs. So the Raiders placed the $10.1 million franchise tag on Jacobs. He has yet to officially sign that franchise tag. And the Raiders have until July 17th to sign a long-term extension for Josh Jacobs. A two-time Pro Bowler last year led the NFL in rushing with uh, just over 1,600 yards and 12 touchdowns, had uh, nearly five yards a carry uh, this uh, past season. You can see back in 2020 and 2019, he was really good those seasons as well with over 1,000 yards in both those years, 12 touchdowns in 2020 and seven touchdowns in 2019. But when we talk about how the Chiefs operate and the way they do things, think about this. I know there's a lot of speculation about uh, Clyde's future and what exactly it holds with this Kansas City Chiefs team. But think about this. If they do move on from CEH, the Chiefs are going to have the only backfield in the NFL at $3 million. They have shown that you can win and you can do really well in this league without having to pay the running back position. And beyond just the Chiefs, if you look at the rest of the National Football League, since 2009, here is the salary, along with the uh, leading rusher within the Super Bowl of the winning team and what they make. Here's the blueprint right here for you. Uh, Pacheco last year for Kansas City. Just a little less than $900,000. Cam Akers before that with the Rams, less than $900,000. Leonard Fournette in Tampa, 2020, $2 million. Uh, 2019, back to the Chiefs, Damian Williams with just over a $1 million. 2018, Sony Michelle with uh, New England, less than $500,000. You can see it's not just the Chiefs that have proven this to work, to not pay the running back, spend money elsewhere, and succeed. But this is what everybody else is doing, and that's what's proven to work out best for these teams to win uh, when it comes to taking home that Lombardi trophy. And I don't see any reason why the Chiefs will get away from that blueprint that you see on your screen right now. So before we go, I want to ask you, should the Chiefs add a top running back, whether it's a Josh Jacobs, I know Dalvin Cook is out there, 
Uh, you know, obviously there's some other big names as well. What do you think? Should the Chiefs add one of the elite rushers in the NFL? Type HY for hell yes, type HN for hell no, and let me know what you think in the comments section below. Hit me up on social media, talking about the NFL all the time. Uh, you can find me there when I'm not in on this show for Harrison Graham on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Tyler Jones Live. Appreciate you joining us, and we'll see you next time here on the Chiefs Report.